From Ramona High School in Riverside, it is the Riverside TV Game of the Week. As tonight, we bring you the Lions of Arlington taking on the Warriors of Patriot High School. Good evening, everybody. J.R. Ibarra along with Nick Rice, who's uh, he'll be here in just a minute. But nonetheless, we'll start off tonight's football game. Great night for football here on this April Friday evening. Again, kind of a strange uh, set of circumstances that brought us to this point of having this spring football season. But nonetheless, here we are in week number four out of five to get things rumbling here for the 2020 season in 2021. Both of these teams are fairly evenly matched. They come in with overall records of one and two in the River Valley Football League. And so they've been struggling just a bit, but nonetheless, River Valley has been such a tough place to play this year with the likes of Norta Vista and Hillcrest being the strongest kid on the block so far here in the 2021 spring season, if you will. Arlington in the maroon and gold. Patriot will be in the red and white. Head coach Jeff Roney for Arlington and the head coach of Chris Fowler for the Warriors of Patriot High School. Isaac Gomez will be one of the setbacks in the backfield along with Demarion Allen to receive for the Lions of Arlington. So a lot of expectation for tonight's football game as we said with very evenly matched in the record books. And kick is up on the way and taken right at about the 14. And bringing the football right to about the 36 yard line and that's where Arlington will operate with a first down and 10. Your starting backfield for Arlington will consist of Mitchell Wood underneath center, Christian Bozeman and Raymond Warhop as your running backs. Receiving core is Travis Hodgson, Isaac Gomez, Demarion Allen, and Reed Van Lierup. We'll have a look at the front line after this first play from scrimmage here. First and 10, right at about the 35. Normally, this is a team that likes to run the football, but they are going to get stopped right out of the gate. Christian Bozeman was your ball carrier. And it looks like he may wind up with a loss of about one, depending on how they spot the football. Your offensive line for Arlington consists of Gabriel Holland, Taylor Demacio, Sammy Abdul-Majid, Abraham Gonzalez, and Gregory McDaniel. Pretty sizable front line. As we mentioned, both of these teams really love to run the football, although you'll see a spread when they come underneath center. They tend to mix things up just a bit in terms of their offensive scheme. So Wood operating from the shotgun. Going to send a man in motion with a bad snap. He should just fall in it. No, he picks it up, throws it to the sidelines, and there'll be a penalty flag for intentional grounding, I am sure. So a extremely high snap, way out of the reach, not even close for Wood. So unfortunately, the uh, center, Sammy Abdul-Majid, had a little bit of an issue there getting the football to his quarterback, and that winds up with a huge, humongous loss in addition to an intentional grounding call going against Arlington. So we're going to call this second and long. Well, well, I thought they were going to bring the football back. Nope, they're just going to mark things off here with the intentional grounding call. So that'll now spot the football deep within Arlington territory. They'll place it right inside the 10-yard line. We'll call it about the 8-yard line as where they'll spot the ball. So an unfortunate exchange between the center and quarterback creates a very huge deficit yardage-wise for Arlington. Let's see if they can work themselves out of the hole. Wood from the gun. 
Give is going to go right up the middle. Maybe a gain of three yards on the carry. Raymond Warhop, where's your ball carrier for Arlington? Brings up a third and long, third and 25 to be exact. The Lions showing a spread. They don't throw the ball that often. They might be forced to do something here on a short pass. Rolling out to his left, looking for an open receiver, and intercepted. Just like that, a turnover changes things in a hurry. So Arlington unfortunately throws the football away on an Interception. I believe that might have been Austin Kramer who came up with the pick. So now, first and 10 for the Warriors. Give is going to go right up the gut, maybe a gain of two on the play. Brandon Lopez, your ball carrier. In fact, he is your leading ground gainer here by far with the Warriors of Patriot. So in the backfield is Andrew Lujan along with Brandon Lopez. They don't normally have any kind of fullback. In fact, Lujan is known to run the football as well. This time, snap's going to go to Lopez directly. Rolling out to his left, gets dropped right at about the 15-yard line, and that's where he's upended. So nice, effective running game so far, what we're seeing out of the Warriors of Patriot. And I'm seeing some laundry on the turf, so let's see what the call is here. Might have been a holding call. So both teams kind of having a couple of issues. Yep, it's holding, offensive holding here for the Warriors. So that'll back them up inside of the 30, right at the 29. Lujan from the gun. Going to give to Lopez. No on the keeper. Gets spun around, brought down. Depending on where they spot the ball, might be a loss of one on the play. So brings up a third and long situation. Going to look like a third and 13 scenario. The Warriors also kind of the same offensive philosophy. They do mainly uh, keep it on the ground occasionally will put it up into the air. So let's see if this is what Coach Chris Fowler is going to go to. He's got his receiving crew with Anthony Garcia, Dakota Walker, and Ruben Puncellan. Back to pass is Lujan. Looking over to his right, overthrows his receiver. We got a penalty marker on the play. Puncellan was really held, and it looks like he will get the call going against Arlington. So pass interference on the play. And that'll probably half distance to the goal here for the Warriors of Patriot. Early here in the first quarter, we've got no scores. Time clock is stopped at 848. Glad to have you along with us here from Ramona High School here on Riverside TV. Looks like the officials are just going to back it up so they can get more of an accurate jog off on the yardage here as they add some penalty yards that goes in favor of the Warriors. First and 10 with the ball spotted at the 15. A golden opportunity for the Warriors here to try to get something on the scoreboard early here in this first quarter of play. As we mentioned, both teams coming into this contest with an overall record of one and two. So it's a really evenly matched club. Direct snap going to go to Lopez, but it looks like he's going to get caught behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of about six yards on the play. Great stop on the play. Nicholas. Or Xavier right out making the stop on the play. This will bring up a second and 15 scenario here for the Warriors of Patriot. 
Snap once again goes directly to Lopez. This time has a little bit of daylight out to his left where he's finally brought down right at about the 11-yard line. And what do you know? We're joined by Nick Wright. Nick, what are you doing here? <laughs> well, you know, I figured I might as well watch some high school football tonight. How about that, Jared? <laughs> did we keep you from an important dinner date or something? You it know? sure did, you know. Okay. But she asked, well, aren't you supposed to be at the Riverside game? And I was like, you know what? You're right. i got to get going. I was well, just at one of our world-famous Riverside restaurants around here. How about that? Awesome. There we go. <laughs> Going to bring up a third and sixth scenario. Lujan now back in the gun, rolling out to his right. Looking, looking, looking. Going to keep it. Gets knocked right at about the nine-yard line, but it'll be shy of a first down. You know, I was really surprised to see the amount of fans here tonight. Not that there isn't usually a great contingency. It, well, but. it is senior night here for Arlington, so I think yeah. they might have relaxed the, uh, the rules a little bit as, to, as far as the number of relatives who could show up on this mm -hmm. Friday night for football, which is great. That's I mean, it's, great. it's nice just in general that we have stands uh, f filled with some fans here for, right. for a night of this, uh, this contest here. I mean, it's not as great as that tie you're wearing, JR, but <laughs> it's pretty good. You literally have a logo of every professional team Regardless of sport. I tried to cover there. all the all the bases on sure that one. Did. So kick up and it's good. So Edney Plata Lara kicking it through the uprights here. Excuse me. I'm looking at the wrong looking at the <laughs> wrong uh, wrong list of folks here. That is Jose Venegas. All right. Putting it through the uprights for the Warriors of Patriot. Boy, that was some drive, wasn't it? It was a good drive. It, it, uh, un, you know, it unfolded with an interception. So, unfortunately, the turnover really did cost the Lions of Arlington on that first drive. Yeah. And uh, let's see if they can kind of get things moving here. For the most part, defensively, the Warriors of Patriot have really done a very effective mm -hmm. job in really defensing the run tonight against Arlington. You know, Watching or you know, learning about Jeffrey Roney, the Arlington coach, it is interesting to see him move around this league, but it seems like he's found himself a home at Arlington High School. And the team's coming off a win against his alma mater, La Sierra. How about that? 38 7. Yeah, as you said, Roney has been around the league, so he's well experienced as the ball is going to be taken at the 20 and pushed out of bounds to Marion Allen. Doing the run back here on the kickoff. A little bit of extracurricular activity shouldn't be an issue, though. Yeah. I mean, what is interesting, looking around the entire, uh, all the Riverside teams in the entire league, what is interesting is that a lot of these star guys do go both ways, and yes. Marion Allen's one of those guys where he plays every single snap um, in a given game, and especially this year with COVID just shrinking these rosters. Yeah, and I know talking to both coaches ahead of tonight's ball game, you know, it was not just the, the whole aspect of, of illness, but a lot of seniors, unfortunately, had to go to the workforce. Carry yeah. on the play. I believe that is Bozeman. Going to get stopped right at the line of scrimmage. So once again, defensively, the run has been really played effectively by the Patriots. Or excuse me, by Patriot. Yeah. Well... Not just the workforce, but the baseball force. That's Took quite true. a few of these guys. That's true. And uh, who could blame them? Second and 10, 6.07 here in the first quarter play. Bozeman, once again, your ball carrier. Boy, he is met right in the line of scrimmage. And the penetration that is being effectively put out here by the defensive line has really stopped any kind of surge here. And it looks like Jeff Roney will take a timeout. That was excellent by Jeremiah Burchett of uh, Patriot. But right now the Warriors look like on both sides of the ball, they're just controlling the line of scrimmage. Uh, they'd certainly look like a team that before the game might get hampered by the lack of players on their roster. Right. I mean, those are the guys dressed in the white tops. They have maybe 25 players dressed. I mean, it makes it easy for a coach. You can kind of remember everybody's names. I always was amazed playing high school football that, you know, the coach can remember my name. You have 100 <laughs> different guys to remember. But as easy as it is to remember names, it's pretty hard uh, to sub guys out. 
Jeremiah I, Perchette. That was a big time move for him. I know in talking to Chris Fowler, the head coach for Patriot, not the same Chris Fowler from ESPN, I might add. <laughs> I know. It was hard to figure out who this guy is. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he you had says, the same problem. Yeah, he says he has a lot of freshmen on the squad here in this spring spring football season. Oh, he does. Yes, he does. Back to pass. Ball is tipped and unfortunately not able to find an open receiver. And that'll bring up a fourth down and kicking situation. So once again, offensively, the Lions get stalled, looking to go to the pass. And that defense, once again, has done a stout job here for the Warriors. I mean, in any other league, this might be an opportunity to compete for a league championship. Not that these guys are entirely out of it. Both the Warriors and Lions are one and two. But when you're in a league with Notre Vista and Hillcrest and Ramona, that'll certainly be something, uh, music to the ears of Jeff Gorham. It is really hard to win a title in this league. River Valley League has always been tough. It's uh, a usual slugfest year after year, and it's pretty. It's been interesting to see Hillcrest emerge as the strongest kid on the block. That's uh, yeah. You know, I was kind of expecting Norta Vista to take the lead, but uh, uh, boy, they they have really flexed their muscles here in this spring season. Yeah, and every time I uh, talk to Jeff Gorham, Gazalasan, and they bring up those Hillcrest Trojans, the first thing they talk about is the uniforms. I was like, what is up with these uniforms? And you know what? <laughs> They're pretty good. So first down and 10 at 532 here in the first quarter. Warriors leading by three. Let's see what uh, comes up here with this scenario as the ball is planted right at the 35. Brandon Lopez, your ball here, going out to his right. Going to get stacked up right just beyond the line of scrimmage for a gain possibly of one. Yeah, Ray Warhop and Christian Bozeman. Speaking of freshmen, Bozeman is a freshman. They were among those defensively. Impressive play by the Lions. So it will be a gain of about close to two yards. At least that's where the yardstick's showing, although it <laughs> seems like it's a little bit further in. So it could be a mm -hmm. gain of just one. We'll call it a second and eight. At least the board's calling it a second and eight scenario. Snap once again to Lopez. Going to drive his legs forward for a pickup of about three to four yards on the gainer. Brings up a third down scenario here for the Warriors. Well, I hope none of you folks were hoping that this game was going to end up in the triple digits on both sides. These are some old school offenses. Yes. yes. <laughs> so probably not the uh, score fest that we saw uh, last week. Third down scenario, Lopez, your ball carrier looks like he will have enough for the first down as he pushes the football just past the 46-yard line. I know talking to Coach Jeff Roney here for Arlington, he was really, one of his key concerns is controlling the line of scrimmage on both ends of the football. And obviously they're having just a bit of a struggle at that yeah. early here in this first quarter of play. I mean, that sounds like the game plan for both non-ESPN head coach Chris Fowler and Jeffrey Roney. <laughs> you know, control the line of scrimmage. It's, it's a throwback. Lujan in the gun, looking to pass. Has a receiver open and just beyond the hands of Ruben Puncellan. Oh, man, he had a golden opportunity and just out of his reach. I do wonder how many repetitions... Yes, COVID has shortened the practice schedule for both of these teams, but I just wonder how many repetitions these receivers have had. I mean, that looks like they're, I mean, you, you run that a couple of more weeks in practice, and that looks like a completion and maybe even a touchdown. Yeah, Prince Allen only came into this game with three games on the spring season with just 22 yards and receiving. Lopez, direct snap, keeps the feet moving and pushes Everybody past the uh, first down marker and we'll pick up another first down and 10 here for the Warriors. Maybe you don't even need to control the line of scrimmage when you have a guy like that running the football. That was pretty impressive. Yeah, Brandon Lopez came into this football game with a total of 176 yards. Average is about 3.3, but I think that average is going to go up here just in this first quarter alone. Oh, yeah. Clock is rolling at 3.30 here in the first, and it looks like we will have a timeout down on the field. Maybe an exchange of a brand-new football. 
Why would you need a brand new football? We've got a perfect day for football. Boy, this is, I mean, what a beautiful night. It's, yeah. it's got a nice cool breeze. Great I don't to have see your uh, ski mitts on. You know, it looks like I'm going to pass up on the ski All mitts right. for tonight. Uh, don't have to break out the heater or the parka <laughs> like we did last Friday night, so I think we're good. Or the astronaut suit. You probably or the astronaut suit. I, I kept that in the car tonight because I thought, you know, looking a little bit better here. Right. First down and 10. Lujan tries to shovel pass it out to Lopez, and unfortunately, not even close. I do wonder that play call when you have the, I mean, not just the running game. I understand a pass on first and 10. They aren't that old school. But I, I don't understand why you'd roll out on a play like that with your offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage like they have, blocking well, why you'd run a bootleg, allowing uh, the Lions to have an open shot at the quarterback. Well, I think uh, non-ESPN Chris Fowler is deciding <laughs> to try to uh, mix things up offensively here, just <laughs> trying to throw off the Lions just a bit from a defensive standpoint. Fair enough. Lujan, direct snap to Lopez. Kind of your bread and butter guy at this point. Takes the football right down to the 35. Pickup of five on the play. And it's really hard to game plan for a running game like this. When you have the offensive line running well, so far in the first quarter, Arlington, it looks like this is a defense that knows the run's coming, especially where it's going, mostly between the tackles. And in the first quarter, they still can't stop it. Going to bring up a third and five scenario. Direct snap once again to Lopez. This time he's going to get stacked up right at the line of scrimmage and barely gain a yard, if that. So this will bring up a fourth down, but the ball is in the territory of the Lions. So you got to wonder if non-ESPN Chris Fowler might go for that. <laughs> you know what? You and me are non-ESPN too, That's JR. true. <laughs> and you don't hear anybody saying non-ESPN. <laughs> then again, usually they don't, I don't hear them saying my name at all. But so this it, is huge. It does appear that they will go for it on this fourth down situation. Lujan and Lopez kind of talking things over in the backfield. Looks like sending a man in motion. Direct snap once again to Lopez. Rolling out to his right. Looking to pick up some blockers and nothing there. In fact, it'll be a loss of two on the play. Credit the stop on Raymond Warhop for the Lions. Well, you know, I might have jinxed myself because Arlington comes out looking like that defensive line's getting pushed around out there, and they really showed something on the stretch of that drive. Yeah, I think this is the time where they've made some nice adjustments defensively to stop a, a running game that has been fairly effective so far early here in this first quarter of play. Yeah. Clock is stopped at 1.14. And we expect this to be a good football game, I think JR. so. I think so. I mean, they both have played basically the same schedule, and both of them looked pretty much the same in their three opponents, both one and two. Give yeah, is going to go right off tackle to Bozeman. He'll pick up at least five on the gainer. Both were crushed by Ramona. Both picked up pretty impressive wins against La Sierra. So, yeah, it should be a good football game. And in talking to Coach Fowler here for the Warriors, you know, like I mentioned, he does have a lot of freshmen in the game. And he says this is maybe to his advantage in the fall because mm -hmm. he's had a really good solid look at his freshmen to see right. who's got the skill set, who needs development. And he's, he's very optimistic in utilizing this spring season as a uh, push forward uh, uh, the football uh, season in the fall. Yeah. Oh. Ball, ball is on the turf. And going to be a loss on the play. Looks like an exchange that just went awry there with Bozeman and Demarion Allen. So a little bit of trickery, unfortunately, comes up with nothing. In fact, a loss Tricked on themselves. the play. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that, that is something that you hear. You know, with a lot of freshmen, it is a really interesting moment where maybe these coaches consider having, I know you can't have official games, 
during the spring and summer after next week. But maybe these coaches are interested in, you know, bringing these guys together for seven on sevens over the summer now that, you know, stuff like that is more acceptable. Clock is rolling under 10 seconds. Give us to Bozeman. Keeps the feet moving, has some daylight, and takes the football right to about the 38 yard line of There's the Warriors. There's a freshman. Nice look by Bozeman. That will end the first quarter of play, so a nice gainer here and breathe some life offensively into the Arlington Lions. I mean, if he's running like that as a freshman, pulling away from everybody, I just wonder what he's going to look like in the years to come. Yeah, this is such great development when you think down the road three seasons from now when these guys reach their senior yeah. season. Just how much game time they've had, especially within this uh, abbreviated 2020 season. Yeah, for Jeffrey Roney, I'm sure, I mean, you, you certainly hope so because he has moved around a little bit, that he has found his, the team that he enjoys coaching, and, you know, there's nothing like continuity uh, across Riverside High School football. For coaches that are around a, lot, a, a while, that's the advantage you have to developing a system, to creating a coaching staff around you. So if Bozeman has Roney around him for all three years moving forward, I think the sky's the limit for the running back of Arlington. So we're going to switch fields here, switch sides as now the Lions. Looking at a first down and 10 to start off the second quarter of play. Give us the Bozeman. Once again, has some daylight. Keeps the feet moving. And is finally brought down right at about the 26-yard line. Austin Kramer making the stop here for the Warriors. I've got a good idea. How about you keep feeding that guy? I think so. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting how they've kind of gone a little bit more off tackle here in these last couple of runs yep. because they were trying up the middle in the first part of the first quarter and it just was not being effective. Yeah, Arlington looks like they have a stable of running backs. And, I mean, kudos to who can remember the last high school team that brings at zero wide receivers on a regular basis. Man in motion this time. The give is going to go right off tackle. Got a flag down on the play. And all the way and getting a touchdown, but we do have a penalty marker. What a run by Allen. Demarion Allen. Oh. And unfortunately, is going to get negated by a holding call. Yeah, I didn't really see that. That looked like good blocking, but Demarion Allen, it's when you join this Arlington offense, you are a wide receiver by roster, but not by uh, traits. As Allen has run the ball as much as he's caught the ball for the Lions this season. So that'll push back the Lions, unfortunately, as they kind of get stalled, shoot themselves in the foot. Still have fairly decent field position to work with, but it'll be a first down and long here. Is that Bozeman? Oh! Oh, oh wow. Well, it looks like we have a player down. Uh, he threw up, <laughs> JR. Wow. Wow. Uh, Jeff Roney's going to have, uh, obviously, a visit. Yeah, I wonder what that is. And nevertheless, uh, that, that was a crushing penalty and, and something that we see a little more often during this COVID season than regular, uh, you know, the penalties and the turnovers. You know, I hadn't seen a season with this many penalties and turnovers in a long time, and I think it just has to do with players. I mean, how hard it must be for these coaches to tell these players for about seven, eight months that, hey, you're going to school and we're practicing on occasion because we're going to have a season. How hard is it to convince these players that, hey, there's going to be a season? So exactly, you had to believe that they weren't quite as sharp as usual. Well, that's something you don't see every day. Yeah, Anthony, <laughs> Anthony Gonzalez is your player who unfortunately wound up getting ill there. Yeah. And he still looks a little woozy on the sidelines. So let's hope the best for him as he continues with play. Hopefully he's just maybe dehydrated, could be yeah. the scenario. Could be. Another case could be maybe got the wind knocked out of him, and that could have, boy, I don't know if you've ever had that. I had that once. It's, Helmet right to the worst possible spot, top of the stomach. Oh, that, that's horrible. It'll put you to the turf <laughs> pretty quick. Oh, yeah. 
Now, it was so bad for me. In order for me to catch my breath, they had to pull, put my legs above my head <laughs> and wring me out like I'm some sort of a sponge. It was so Do weird. Do we have video of this someplace? <laughs> Unfortunately, JR, it's nowhere to be found. <laughs> and just take my word for it. Clock rolling at 10.53 in the second quarter of play. Warriors leading by a score of 3 to nothing. And it looks like it will be a sack on Wood. Once again, Austin Kramer Ugh. flexing the muscles here for the Warriors of Patriot. Yeah, he almost had to go to a pass play on that sort of down a distance. But so, that was just impressive by the Lions. So this probably well takes him out of any kind of field goal range, even though it is second and long at this point. We're going to call it second and 20 as Wood comes in. You know, in a game like this, one touchdown could mean the difference. And the give is to Maloney. Keeps the feet moving. We'll pick up maybe six to seven on the play. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm jazzed for the day that RCC football comes back. And they picked up, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jamal McGlory was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at Ar Arlington High School. I, I got to check on that. But he mm. was an RCC running back from a couple years ago. But typically the Tigers will snatch about one or two guys at each of these Riverside schools. And the RCC reigning state champions is covered on Riverside TV too. And Bozeman, your ball carrier, on a third and long. Takes the ball just past the original line of scrimmage. We'll bring up a fourth down scenario. So I would imagine since they are in the territory of the Warriors that, hey, let's let's take a look and see if we can uh, pick up this yeah. first down here. It was basically the same side of the field and the same situation for Patriot. When their fourth down try was no good, maybe the Lions can convert. This would be a huge momentum swing in the game. So it's looking like a fourth down and eight scenario here for the Lions. Bozeman in the backfield. And the give to Marion. Just shy of the oh. first down marker by about a couple of yards. I mean, I like the play call. Bozeman was the blocker, which was an interesting play call too, but it, it, it basically would have worked. It basically would have worked if Allen can make one man miss. Play was developing rather well, but unfortunately just could not get it yeah. past that first down marker. So this will turn things over here for the Warriors of Patriot High School. Right. Even though Christian Bozeman was in the block on that play, I would say if, I mean, I'm sure Riverside College is already looking at this guy. He That's already right. has the size. I know he's a freshman. I'm not allowed to say that. But he's got the size and he's got the moves. And apparently also has the blocking skills too to uh, translate to the next level. There's no question we're going to see a lot of him as the years progress here for the Lions of Arlington. Yep. First down and 10. Ball spotted just inside of the 20. We got whistles and probably movement on the play. Yep, actually delay a game. Yeah. So once again, the laundry hitting the turf here plenty of times in this first half. Well, you know, the penalties and the clock stoppages gives these fans plenty of opportunity to grab some concessions, you know, so there is a bright side to it. I don't know if there's any concessions. Oh, well, you well, know what? Unfortunately, <laughs> the snack bar has been closed due to COVID. What? What? Yeah, has been killing me. I Dang mean, I can't, we can't go grab a snack during halftime. Looks like we have another whistle down on the field. That might have been a timeout called. Timeout is being called here by the Warriors of Patriot. Ah, that's a bit of a bummer. Oh, well. I guess we're just going to have to talk to each other during the half. Well, you know, hopefully maybe next <laughs> week, the final week of this uh, spring season, maybe the concessions will get open or, or somebody will sneak in a Costco hot dog or something. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Oh, I don't blame them. <laughs> I think that's where I'm going after this game. Yeah, but it is interesting, you know. You just wonder how many of those RCC scouts or – you know, something like that, or watching, you know, Riverside TV saying, hey, that guy's pretty good. 
Well, if you have nothing to do next weekend, why don't you bug out at the Virtual Riverside Insect Fair on April the 12th through the 16th. For more information, please visit RiversideInsectFair.com or follow us on Facebook at Riverside Insect Fair. So you're going to that, right? Oh, I absolutely am. I, I knew you would. Got to take your cockroach uh, collection maybe mm -hmm. and, and just kind of spout it around for people to see. Well, Jeff, you know, inform me about it. He was... I mean, he sounds like a connoisseur of insects as well. <laughs> and once you get past the whole, you know, freaked out part where I definitely had that moment, I was like, oh, my, eating insects with little bugs. But, you know, the way that it, uh, they, they, they cook it, you know, there's a chef that's going to be there. I think that's actually pretty cool. Poonsalan goes in motion. Give is going to go to Lopez. Gets wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Looks like it could be a loss of a couple. You know, I know football is a crazy, unpredictable game, but from the looks of it, I'm pretty sure whoever scores the first touchdown of this game is going to win it. These defenses look like they're just flying around out there, and that plays right into each other's strengths. You know, there's good-sized kids on both of the lines of scrimmage yep. on your front line, so there's not a lack of muscle for sure for oh, either yeah. one of these ball clubs. They must be going to the insect fair a lot. <laughs> That's my guess. So it'll be uh, no gainer on that last play. So second and 15, Lujan back to pass, looking out, dumps it off to Lopez. Actually, that is another receiver here, Demirian. No, excuse me. That is James Escobar. Yeah. You know, just like you and me, you know, a lot of these guys are just trying to get back into the football fold. And I just was thinking about it on the way past my dinner date on the way here <laughs> that, you know, football season is already going to end. Next week is the that last is, weekend. That is crazy. And it's like, yeah. what? We just got started. I know. Third and 15 is the scenario here for the Warriors. Pass looking long and nowhere near his intended receiver. Looking downfield. Look like Jacob Balu, if I'm not mistaken, number five. Yeah, there you go. So the Patriot Warriors and the Arlington Lions, it should be a great football game. But one thing I was thinking about, too, is how these guys are going to stay in shape for the uh, fall football season. And one thing that has been a little tragic now, um, obviously, when injuries, I don't talk about folks who <laughs> – have thrown up, which we saw one today. That is the weirdest thing. Demarion Allen bobbles a football, able to land on it, but it's going to be spotted right at about the 42-yard line. Ugh. So he got away with a, yeah. uh, a really potential disaster. mistake there, a disaster, yeah, for sure, because there was plenty of grain for any one of the defenders to scoop it up. Right. But anyways, like I was saying, you know, these – injuries have come in much bigger loads than we've seen in years past and i think that's due to the COVID. so i do wonder because this is unprecedented you see it in the nba too where there's an insane amount of injuries hmm. because of just how short the off season was shortest off season for a professional sport of the four major sports of all time like 90 something days and the off season is going to be very similar in high school football so you wonder how these guys are going to stay in shape and avoid injuries bozeman your ball carrier looks like he'll get at least six maybe seven out of the run there yeah because for guys like the freshman christian bozeman and others who are going to come back next year i mean if you're not in the right off-season regimen, if there isn't a requisite amount of time in between this season and next, that could be very dangerous for these guys. Second and a long one, so nice gainer here for the Lions. Oh, balls on the turf wise by Lujan just to jump on it like a grenade. Yeah. You don't want to try to make things happen when you at least are in the territory here of your opponents. Yeah, that's great coaching because it's very easy. Oh, I, <laughs> I think the, the natural uh, just thought is let's pick it up and make something out of it. No, yep. no, just drop right on that football. So good play there by Mitchell Wood. I mean, obviously you're a big football fan because you have the logo of every every team on your tie there. I mean, 
I'm sure you you could know, but I can't remember a single time when somebody scoops up and makes a touchdown off a play like that. It's, it just doesn't happen. It's very difficult to do. Oh, we got a little bit of trickery with Demarion Allen. Now your ball carrier first uh, give was to Bozeman. Well, that's very hard to do, too. Brings up a fourth down and five, and I would imagine the Lions are going to stay on the field offensively here. Why not? you got to make some things happen. Clock yeah. is running at five minutes to play here before the first half ends. It's been kind of a, a quick first half here. Well, I've never been a high school football coach, but I, I would punt it here. I think this is too far a distance. The reward is too small to go for it on a fourth, and maybe two you do it. Fourth and five seems a little too much. Let's see what happens if Wood does the pooch kick. No, he's going to go to Bozeman. Still on his feet, Scott Green. To the 10, to the 5, touchdown, Lions. <laughs> so scratch that idea, Nick. Yeah, maybe not the best idea. I wasn't <laughs> a high school football coach, and uh, I think I, I don't think I'm going to be a high school football coach anytime soon. 35-yard run to give them their first points on the ball game, and that will give the Lions the advantage. And let's see what happens with a point after attempt. But it's a very nice, effective run by Bozeman. Yep. Not a high school football coach. Not a middle school <laughs> football coach. Not a YMCA coach. Looks like they're lined up for a two-pointer attempt. Snap. Going to go directly and... In for the score, yes. So they got the two. Isaac Gomez doing the Wildcat direct snap. So they just busted it right up through the middle there and wind up with the uh, the two-point conversion. Wow. That was incredible blocking on the touchdown and the two-point conversion. And I'm telling you, I'm gushing at Christian Bozeman. Yes. Fourth and five, it's fourth and touchdown. So far, the bread and butter here for the Lions of Arlington. So that will give them the advantage with the clock stopped at 4.30 here in the second. Great to have you along with us here on Riverside TV. J.R. Ibarra along with Nick Rice bringing you all this action. Week four out of five. And for those of you who don't know in particular, the reason why we're not four out of ten, we're four out of five weeks is because the CIF indicated that next week is the latest you could possibly play high school football. Of course, these schools went into the proper tier, the county did, with these schools in it in order to safely play in uh, COVID with the state of California declaring. So you have a situation where you have to have six weeks between last season, or this season, I guess, and then the practice for next year. So that's why we're at four or five, and sadly, four or five. At least, I mean, we'll take it. Yep. You know, it, it, for so long it looked like nothing was going to happen here for the football season, which just would have been tragic for the mm -hmm. seniors especially. Brandon Lopez, fair caught the football, so it's going to be spotted right at about the 32-and-a-half-yard line. With the clock stopped at 428 here in the second quarter of play. Once again, it's Lujan and Lopez in your backfield for the Warriors. Direct snap going to go to Lopez. Got a bit of daylight off to his left, and the ball's on the turf. Will it be ruled a fumble? Looks I believe, like it is. I believe it is. Wow. So the turnover winds up going in favor of the Lions. After it looked like it was going to be a gainer of almost seven to eight yards on the play by Lopez, coughs it up, and now the Lions put themselves back in scoring position. Yeah, Patriot had controlled this game. They're falling apart right now. Uh, I don't know what it is. The Lions are forcing turnovers. They're blocking much better, and they've got a chance to really turn the entire uh, tide of this football game. And maybe... The way that they're turning it around is is the, the video screen that they have. Uh, Patriot isn't uh, having their defense watch a screen. You could Maybe our camera crew could look at it in a little bit. Demarion Allen, you couldn't see it on the camera. Demarion Allen was the guy who came up with the football, and he was kind of spouting a belt. 
<laughs> a championship looking belt yeah. to uh, to the crowd here and everybody was getting uh, their thrills out of it. Isaac Gomez, your ball carrier here for the Lions of Arlington. Picks up about five on the play. We'll bring up a second and five scenario here for Arlington. Yeah, Arlington's putting together their best NFL rendition. They have a giant video screen right on the sidelines. So right after one side of the ball uh, heads off the field, they're headed right over to the TV screen to look at what they're doing. Patriot does not have that advantage, and maybe that is part of the difference in this football game today. Second and five with the clock rolling, and it looks like it might be a loss of about two to three by Mitchell Wood. So that'll push back the Lions. Now third and eight, I guess. So a little bit of a stumble there by Arlington. Brings up this third down scenario. Once again, I would imagine you got to look to Bozeman here to try to pick up that yardage and <laughs> possibly a first down. Yep. He is your go-to man looking for some daylight is going to get wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. So that didn't quite work out according to plan. Yeah, that might be one where the defense is going over to the video screen after that one. There was at least four different Patriot defenders to touch him in the backfield. I mean, Christian Bozeman's a good player as just a freshman, but uh, I don't think he's that good. So it looks like we have another timeout down on the field. Stops the clock at 2.38 here in the second quarter of play. Great to have you along with us here on Riverside TV for our game of the week. Now, we at the City of Riverside recognize that 2020 presented financial challenges for many. If you are a Riverside Public Utilities customer, there are utility bill assistance programs available to assist you. Learn more about Riverside Public Utilities assistance programs at RiversidePublicUtilities.com forward slash assistance or contact RPU customer service at 951-782-0330. That's 951-782-0330. You sounded like a professional, JR. I do my best. <laughs> Clock stopped at 238, fourth and seven scenario. No kicking crew out here for the Lions. And look in the pass out to his left. Ball is caught, but we will be well shy of the first down. You know, Ca catch is made by Anthony Gonzalez. Yeah, that was the result. I thought when I said I wouldn't go for it on a fourth down, I thought that was the way the previous fourth down was going to look. And, uh, I mean, you keep gambling, and for Arlington, because that defense is playing so so well, you might be able to get away with it. But, I mean, the Lions, there's only a matter of time. When you give your opponent this many opportunities, it's only a matter of time before they'll take advantage. Turnover on downs with the clock stopped at 231. So let's see if the Warriors can make things happen with two and a half to play. Direct snap to Lopez. Keeps the feet moving. Looks like he'll be right at that first down marker. And, yes, first down and 10 here as they move the change. No, nope, yeah. it'll be just shy, actually. Oh. I thought they spotted it. It looked like a first down to me, Jay. Yeah, it so. sure did. <laughs> <laughs> so second and one is the scenario here for the Warriors. Once again, direct snap to Lopez. And he'll just keep the feet churning and push the football right to about the 39 a Patriot. Yep, not a bad decision. It's working on first down. Might as well keep on to it. But this will be the challenge moving forward for these coaches to figure out a way to to add a passing element to the to the playbook or at least different runs to get more guys involved and keep the defense honest. That's going to be the interesting challenge moving forward as I drop my phone. You know, it just seems overall River Valley League is a running league. You know, yeah. things are kept on the turf mainly, and it's no surprise that we're seeing that here on this Friday night contest. Lopez, direct snap once again. He's going to get turned around, picks up, and keeps the feet moving. It's going to be a little bit of a scrum. They're like a rugby scrum, oh, look and they that. keep the feet moving. No whistle as of yet. <laughs> Finally. 
whistle on the play, but not until there's a gain of maybe eight. You've got to believe this is going to exhaust the Lions defense. So that'll stop the clock at 112. So they have a little bit of time to work here, work, work with here with about 52 yards. Yeah, this is the one problem though. Warriors do have all three timeouts, but when you don't have that passing element, you could keep moving piles like that, but there's only so much field position you can gain doing that in uh, 72 seconds. So let's see what happens as both teams come to the sidelines to have a little bit of discussion. You know, oddly enough, both Roney and Fowler actually coached together at Pauley for really? a brief period of time. So they, they really do know each other and kind of the philosophies of what they do offensively and defensively. So they are not unfamiliar to each other's nice. tendencies. All right. So well, that's that A-level uh, research that you do, JR. It's the tendencies of, of both coaches to uh, play a chess game here to, uh, to see what comes up with tonight's uh, victory, if you will. I like chess, but it's hard to, to predict two or three moves ahead, and that's what coaches, I'm sure, are doing. That's, that's why you see these coaches sometimes, like a Jeffrey Roney. He just resigned from La Sierra a few years ago. I'm sure he was just exhausted. Back to passes. Luhan has a man open, catches made, and taken right down to the 22-yard line. Eloy Gutierrez coming up with the catch. That's a nice throw, and that must have caught the Lions off guard. Clock is moving at one minute left to play, actually 101. And we got whistles and flags, and it's going to be a legal procedure here against yeah. Patriot High School. Yep, nice to see that passing game, though, uh, for the Patriot Warriors. Nice surprise. I mean, it, yeah. it does mix things up. And you know what? I think in the second half of play, I would imagine either one of these coaches might go to the uh, bag of tricks there to make that happen. Bag of tricks. But, yeah, I mean, you know, like a Jeffrey Roney, I'm sure he was just like so many coaches. They just sometimes the grind is, is, is real. I, when you go through a, a football season, regardless of what level, and high school is even an interesting challenge on top of it because you're typically uh, teaching a class and trying to figure out, you know, a way to find time to, to look at tape and whatnot. And, you know, unlike, unlike teaching, you know, when you're a high school coach, you're being, you are under a very, very tight microscope and you have to perform or your job's at stake. And that's a salary that's on the line. So... You know, it's a, it's a high-pressure situation, and even in these five games. I mean, you and me, we're sitting back. Uh, if there was concessions, we'd just be relaxing with a Costco hot dog. But you know what? It's a little different atmosphere down there on the sideline. Coaches are playing for jobs, which is tough. Also bringing to the fact I know, and some of these coaches have uh, mentioned to us before the games, is that they have to take responsibility for the freshmen the junior varsity and the varsity that is squads, crazy. which is, man, talk about pressure when you have that many players to try to pay attention to mm -hmm. uh, in this short block of time. Yeah, when we talked to coaches earlier this year, I thought, I thought oh, that's one, one of a different kind. But it sounds like every coach is doing that. I think so. First and 15 scenario. And going to get dumped. Lujan gets dumped behind the line of scrimmage. Making the stop on the play. Looks like 44. Tino Lilo Mayaba. Oh, nice. Oh, man. Okay. Tino Lilo Lilo Mayaba. <laughs> We're going to have to work on that one. Yeah, I think we might have to. He I'm looks sure like he, that might not be the last time. Uh, I'm sure we'll hear from his parents on that one. <laughs> you know, there's a little bit of pressure, I guess, from up here to get <laughs> things right. That's about the only thing we feel pressure on. I know. to get the names pronounced I correctly. Know. And to make sure we're not freezing outside. Yeah. Clock has stopped at 27 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. So maybe a couple of plays left on this potential drive here. Yeah, 72 degrees. I'm a little disappointed. I thought it was going to be colder tonight. I did, too. I, I did come prepare. Nice. But uh, kind of worked in, in favor of not having to go to the uh, to the park at tonight. Right. So it'll be a second down and 20. 
Boy, are you looking at another passing situation here? Sure am. I mean, for Patriot, they've got to be kicking themselves. There's, there's a lot to look at uh, during next week's game in preparation for it, a lot of tape to review because they've shot themselves in the foot. Warriors have looked every bit as good as the Lions, but penalties, turnovers, fourth down miscues, uh, that's really hurt them. So with a second and 20 scenario here for Patriot, direct snap going to go to Brandon Lopez, and he'll churn up a few yards of about three to four on the gainer. They're running Clock out of time. is rolling. They got to do something quick or stop the clock somehow. I'm not sure about that play call. I would have, it looked like their passing game was good enough to try it. Clock inside of 15 seconds remaining. Lujan going to go back downfield. Tosses it up, and it's intercepted by the Lions. Still green, and nothing but daylight. Isaac Gomez going to go for at least what, I think that's 90 yards. yards. That's yeah. about 90 yards on the return. Wow. Oh, my goodness. We got whistles and flags, though. I think that return's going to get negated. Ah. That is terrible if it is. I mean, you can't blame the play call. I mean, because the clock was running out of timeouts, you had to take a shot to the end zone. Right. Clock has run out here in the first half. If that's a penalty on a hold, that'll go, and it looks like it is, because the teams are going to the locker room. Oh, that, it is. Oh, yep. my gosh. Yep, we're going to the half, eight to three, and that has to wow. be crushing. That is a, a tough one for uh, Arlington to swallow because they had a golden opportunity. Yep. Now that's two touchdowns wiped out by the Lions because of penalty. One from Demarion Allen on an uh, end around, and then this one from Isaac Gomez on the pick six. But kind of what we expected out of these two ball clubs, they are yep. fairly evenly matched, so it's right. no surprise that it's you know a five-point lead here for Arlington. So we will step aside here for halftime. We will come back with your second half. You're watching all the action here on Riverside TV.
And welcome back to the campus of Ramona High School where the Lions of Arlington leading by a score of 8-3 to three over the Warriors of Patriot. J.R. Ibarra along with Nick Rice bringing you all the action. You know, not too bad of a first half of play for, for both of these squads there, Nick. Yeah, you know, Patriot looked like a team that until the last couple of seconds in the first half, they really had outplayed Arlington in every way. And then we saw turnovers down the stretch, and all of a sudden the Warriors must have felt pretty good because this team had a pick six wiped off of the board. That was a huge momentum swing in the game. Absolutely. The mistakes have been kind of the, the thing that has dictated what's been happening on the scoreboard as the ball is taken right to about the 33-yard line. And that's where Patriot will operate with a first down and 10. I mean, it was the case for both of these schools. You know, the passing game was relatively limited, but the Warriors showed some promise down the stretch of that first half. They got the ball back with about 2.30 to go in the game right around this side of the field. The Warriors dressed in the white. They marched all the way to about the 15, and then they had back-to-back -back pre snap penalties, pushed them back 10 yards, and then they go to a, a, a interesting a Gomez direct snap run with 20 seconds left out of timeouts in the half. Weird decision. They scramble the ball, throw a pass to the end zone, pick six. Of course, wiped out by penalty. Direct snap once again to Lopez. It's just kind of the same thing over and over, but it yeah. does pick up some yardage. Looks like it'll be a gainer of about seven, possibly eight on the play. And I think one thing that we learned, hey, if, if – there's an opportunity for uh, these guys to go against the decisions of myself. I think it'd be a good idea. We saw Bozeman <laughs> score on a touchdown when I told them to punt. Lopez going to get wrapped up this time, almost immediately at the line of scrimmage. This time he is met by Anthony Gonzalez. So no gainer on the play. We'll call it. It's being shown as a third and three, but it looks shorter than three to me. Yeah. Probably like a yard and a half. But it is a third down scenario here for the Warriors. Direct snap once again, and it might be short of the first down marker. Lopez, once again, your ball carrier. That'll be close. Boy, it is right there, and you got to believe that. Oh, they're going to go for it. Fowler sure. has got to go for this for sure. Yeah. When you have a, that kind of a push from your front line, no, they, why not? Did they signal first down? No. Nope. Boy, it is. Yeah, no, they did. Oh, yeah, first down. They're going to give it to him. That's an interesting hey, spot. Hey, chain gang, gotta move it. <laughs> That's an interesting spot because I thought he was short. Yeah, me too. Me too. But, of course, we're not on the sidelines, so. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all learned today that none of us are high school football coaches. None of us are referees. Yeah. And any of us work for ESPN as well. Yeah. <laughs> At the 42-yard line, Lujan, your ball carrier. Looks like he'll pick up a first down. Stop on the play by Isaac Gomez. Well, there was no doubt about that being a first down. Now, was there, JR? No, not at all. And, you know, I'm kind of surprised. I know Lujan is kind of your second leading ground gainer here for the Warriors. I was actually expecting to see a little bit more of him in running situations, and maybe mm -hmm. they'll, they'll do that adjustment here in the second half. Direct snap this time goes to Brandon Lopez, and it looks like he will get another first down here for Patriot. This was the sort of movement that we, that we saw in the first half, and really the first quarter from Patriot, then all of a sudden we saw the Warriors commit crucial turnovers. We saw Demarion Allen fumble recovery. We saw that pick six wiped off the board, though, but an interception nonetheless. This is the offense that we saw to begin the game. First and 10. Once again, it is Lopez. This time he's going to get stacked up probably for a loss of one on the play. Anthony Gonzalez, once again, one of your defenders in on the tackle. Yeah, this is just a tough league to play in the River Valley League and for both of these schools it's really a must win football game for the team that falls to one and three their hopes of not only a title but even a top two spot will be done brings up a second and ten scenario Lopez once again your ball carrier just pushes his way forward 
for a gain of about seven, possibly eight. Yeah, Stop. we appreciate all of you guys who are engaged. What's so cool about Riverside TV? Please name me the other, the other TV company that that posts their products also on YouTube. Third so. down and two. Lopez. Looks like he'll pick up the first down as the ball is moved right inside of the 25, and that will move the chains. So, yeah, we thank all of you guys for engaging on YouTube as well, as are other outlets. Absolutely. I mean, on Twitter? We're on Twitter, too? <laughs> that's, that's crazy. We're, we're just invading the airwaves. <laughs> well, maybe not the airwaves, but the... Uh, it was a good point. The broadband waves. How about that? And it looks like we're going to get a timeout down on the field. Jeff Roney wants to talk things over with his defensive squad. So clock stop at 7.50. Actually, it's 8.03 on the main scoreboard. Mm -hmm. And the Warriors looking to try to make something happen early here in the second half of play. Great to have you along with us here on Riverside TV. J.R. Ibarra along with Nick Rice in week four out of five for this abbreviated season, but it's nice to have you along joining us on a very pleasant spring evening. Not used to calling football yeah. games in the spring. Are you gonna give them another ad, <laughs> JR? Let's see. Let's go into the ad, uh, let's go into the ad block here. Okay, let's do yeah, it. Let's do this. Do I have enough time? Maybe. Depends how good of a reader you are. Uh, let's see. Let's fly through the web at the virtual Riverside Insect Fair on April the 12th through the 16th. Join us to cook a buggy meal with Chef Robert, partake in arts and crafts, and learn about entomology with UCR. For more information, please visit RiversideInsectFair.com. Be there. Okay. That was nice and quick. I guess they're going to cook up <laughs> bugs. First and 10 scenario, snap goes to Lopez, keeps the feet moving. He's going to be hit by Warhop, but not until he gains about five on the carry. Yeah, that was a big hit from Raymond Warhop. And uh, over a matter of time, it may make these guys second guess running the ball to the regularity they are. And by this point, I think the only thing stopping Patriot is if they can kind of wear down this offense because the Warriors – they are really controlling the line of scrimmage. This was the offense we saw in the first drive of the game. Lujan, your ball carrier, he'll be shy of the first down marker, but it'll gain at least three on the play. And we might have an injury timeout. Yeah, uh, we do have one of the Lions on the turf. Looks like, I'm going to guess it, okay? Tino Lilo Maeva. I, I that, like that pronunciation. Okay, that that's that sounded very. We apologize uh, to the parents if uh, any one of us got it wrong. Uh, Who knows? I, maybe we both got it wrong. Well, we'll we'll let's we'll find out. I'm sure. We'll find out. Yep. Looks like he'll trot off to the sidelines under his own power. So that's good to see. Yeah, not very often you see someone from my guess is Hawaii come in. To. Uh, or it could be American Samoa. A good, good one. Lujan on your ball carry here, and looks like he'll pick up the first down with ease. Takes it right up the gut and moves the chain. Stops the clock at 7.09. Actually, clock will run, and the ball spotted right at the 10. So we'll call it a first and goal scenario here for the Warriors. Mm -hmm. Reed Van Lierup was on that tackle, but the Lions... They've got to figure something out here. They keep getting pushed around by the Warriors on this drive. Push right up again to the middle. Flag down on the play. Lopez, your ball carrier, but I imagine there could be a hold offensively here for Patriot. Now, the way that ball was, the flag was thrown, could this be? It doesn't look like it, but from the placement, it looked like maybe there was a face mask, and I wouldn't blame them. I mean, you've got to figure out a way to bring these guys down because they're running the same play. Direct snap from the Wildcat runner. It's not like they're surprising anything yeah. offensively here for the defensive coordinator for Arlington. So, yeah, and, you're and right. And this is, this is two in the same thing. Patriot keeps doing this. They enter the red zone, and then they shoot themselves in the foot with these sort of penalties, and they may have to throw it here. First and goal from the 20. Balls on the turf. Lujan tosses it out to Lopez, and it'll be a loss. 
Yeah, not the type of pass I was thinking they were going to wow, do. Wow, boy, that was dangerous, too, because that was a lateral, and, boy, if it had been coughed up, it would have been a bad scenario for the Warriors. Yeah, for Chris Fowler, the Patriot head coach, he's got to figure out a way, maybe not for this COVID short season, but in the future, to avoid these sort of circumstances. I don't know how you do it as a coach. Maybe you run extra long practices, but late in drives, it's very easy to hold when you're tired. They've got to figure out a way to avoid that. Yet another drive that goes into the red zone, and then they kill themselves. Second and goal from the 25. Lujan going to get chased out of the pocket. Has a little bit of daylight out to his left. Coughs oh. up the football at the 10. And it looks like the Lions will gain it. Wow. Just when it looked like something was going to break loose and happen here for the Warriors. I think that's Mario Pelagi recovered. I'm going to have to double check that. Demarion Allen, I see, though, is limping off the field here oh. for Arlington, so that's not good. He's right. a Huge very loss. key player offensively and defensively for Arlington. Yeah, mistakes. I mean, it. I, I hate to beat a dead horse. That's the difference in the game. Arlington is taking advantage of these mistakes at least a little bit better than the Lions are causing them. I mean, that has to be, with now three turnovers in the game, The when they go over to the sideline, Chris Fowler's main talking point. Quit beating ourselves. We've got this team won. We just need to stop with the mistakes. First and 10. Ball spotted right at the 10-yard line. Snap is actually the ball's given to Bozeman. Good run. Ezekiel Vasquez was on that tackle. Yeah, Christian Bozeman. And typically you see out of a freshman, you see a guy explode through a hole. You know, as a freshman, 14, 15 years old, it's your first time playing high school football. It's very easy to lose patience. He runs like a Le'Veon Bell where he waits for the holes to develop and then bounces through. That's that's surreal. That That's savvy stuff from Christian Bozeman, number 24, wearing the Trojan red. And Bozeman, once again, your ball here, this time going to get wrapped up, maybe shy of the line of scrimmage by about a yard, and we have another player on the turf. So, yeah, the injuries are beginning to stack up here for Arlington, which is not good. Not at all. Could uh, be just, cramps. Could be just a cramp. Mm -hmm. But th this is the thing I was talking about in the first half. We had such – there's going to be such a truncated off season between this spring and this coming summer. Now, the, the argument may be, hey, well, these guys usually play football in the – fall and then either baseball in the spring or maybe they even you know sprinkle in a little basketball but there's a different set of muscles that you train for each sport so when you're playing a football you're you're, you're working different muscles than basketball and baseball but when you're playing football for one year and then right away a couple of months later that's really going to hurt you moving forward and I think you know I hope not but it's going to put these players more at risk for injuries. And we've seen it this year. And then hopefully we don't see it this coming fall. But when you have such a short off season, that's, that's weeks that you're not spent resting, recovering, and getting ready for the next year. I believe that looks like the number I'm seeing is 57, which is Xavier right out. And boy, he's just kind of staggering to the sidelines there. So that's not a good look. Yeah. In fact, they're just kind of waiting on him right now. Yeah, they may want to wait. He, yeah, he's not like off the field they're by, yet. Yeah, you know, they're, they're about ready to get things going offensively here. And now yeah. we will get things rolling. Wood from the gun gives the Bozeman. Bozeman keeps the feet moving. And on a third down scenario, barely picks up a yard or two. So it's going to be shy, and I would imagine you got to kick the football now. Yeah, Alex Garcia made that tackle. So, yeah, it's it's just a very frustrating circumstance for Patriot. You know how they they were right here with a chance to take the lead, and now Arlington, you know, they may actually go for it. Here. Well, you know what? It is a fourth and one. Mitchell Wood. I wouldn't do this, so you know they're going to convert. <laughs> <laughs> Mitchell Wood in the huddle has Bozeman in the backfield. I, mean, I don't it, think it's it's a pooch kick right. scenario. They don't even have a return man. 
And the give is to Bozeman. Oh, baby, he keeps stacked up, keeps the feet moving, and it gets pushed back for a loss of maybe a yard or two. So, Wait a minute. Wow. The officials are standing at the first down marker. Are they going to give him There's forward progress? There's no way he got the first down. Will it be for They give him forward progress. Wait a minute. Wow. Interesting spot. Yeah, wow. Wow. I – I was watching the whole play. He he barely got to the 19. Yeah. They put the ball right at the 20. He might have reached the 19. There's you thought one. he lost a yard. I, that's what it looked like from uh, this vantage point, that at least about a yard back of the line of scrimmage. And it looks like the officials are going to call out the chain gang and get a measurement on this one. But, boy, that's a very favorable spot there for Arlington. Yeah. All right, let's see. Going to be close. And you know what? Oh, baby, it's going to be shy by maybe oh. four inches. <laughs> hey, oh my it all, it's two of the same, okay, whether it's by a yard or an wow. inch. Either way, they take over this Patriot. I don't know. You know what? I, I'm not going to toot my own horn here, but I said they should have punted <laughs> at their own 19-yard line. But when you have Christian Bozeman, I understand the aggressiveness inside your own end of the field. He was hit by three defenders, and he still was, was uh, yeah, he standing was still his moving. ground. He was yeah. still moving the feet. So it really shows you his strength and abilities as a ball carrier. But this really gives a very golden opportunity now for Patriot. Yeah. First and 10, ball spotted at the 19. Direct snap to Lopez. And he'll just... Bury his head, push it up the middle for a gain of about five on the play. Yeah, if I were head coach Chris Fowler, I'd run that same play. Maybe yes. to the opposite tackle. Yeah. I am going to, on this drive, live or die with that wildcat run. I'm not putting the ball in the air, risking the near pick they had before. And I'm telling my guys, run it and hang on to the ball with two hands. I want points here. Oh, the second and five. Lopez, your ball carrier, takes the ball inside of the five right to about the one-yard line. Just shy of making a touchdown. But it will now bring up a first and goal scenario. Run it. Do they're, it again. They're in hurry up mode. They know they got the advantage. Can just push that line of scrimmage. Direct snap. And Lopez in for the score. You could see it. And, and, and Lopez lowered his shoulders because he knew that he had the defense on its heels. That was a drive where, you know, only, <laughs> listen, I'm not going to toot my own horn. but your horn, man. Toot your horn. You gave them, I mean, it was just too big and too unnecessary of a risk to go for it at your own 19-yard line. Now, again, we don't know what the kicking situation is like right, for these schools. Right, Maybe they don't have a punter that can push it that far, but, I mean, it really hurt them. This could be interesting. Kick is up on the way. Looks good, and it is. So it's a two-point advantage now here for the Warriors mm -hmm. here as the clock stops at 3.07 in the third. Right, and the reason why I say it is Patriot has shown an ability to move the ball. You know, this isn't your typical 8-3 uh, to three ball game where nobody is doing anything on offense. Patriot was consistently marching to the 15-20 yard line and then shooting themselves in the foot with penalties, Huge mistakes, including turnovers. You give Patriot a chance to start of the 20, and, uh, yeah, it's only a matter of time before they could do something like that. And it took three plays, and that was easy. So that turnover on downs placed the Warriors in a really great field position to come up yep. with points on the scoreboard here. Yeah, the 20. Man, can't ask for a better scenario than that. Even though we thought it wasn't going to be their ball. Damarian Allen, your ball carrier, on the run back. Going to take the football right to about the 35, excuse me, 36, 37-yard line. Hey, if, if Bozeman had a slightly better favorable ball spot, we may be looking at a whole different football game. Absolutely. That was a huge measurement by the officials. I mean, we think we got they got it right, but it was huge. Totally changed the momentum of this game. Yeah, in spite of the fact that it looked like a favorable spot, as you mentioned, it still was not enough to uh, pick up the first down. So that could be a pivotal part of what happens here in this contest. Demarion Allen, number two in the maroon red. He has been in and out of the game with injuries throughout. 
limping on, limping off. I wonder just how good he is to go uh, for this series. And we have stoppage on the play, and it looks like we got a timeout being called by Arlington. Interesting decision to begin the drive. So they've only got one timeout left. Yeah, that's that's kind of a tough when you still have mm -hmm. an entire quarter to play. Yeah. But both coaches will size things up with their squads with Chris Fowler, not of ESPN, as we mentioned. <laughs> yep. And Jeff Roney already breaking ranks with his troops. Just wanted to make some sort of adjustment there with his squad. Yeah. Arlington is going to bring back a lot of guys. You mentioned a lot of freshmen on this team. But Demarion Allen's a senior, and, and he has a really good, really interesting skill set. Here he is. Allen, your ball carrier. Gets oh. pushed forward. Pick up of at least six to seven yards on the carry. Well, he look, it looked pretty weird the way he fell down, almost as if he was pulled down by the face mask. Glad to see he got up okay. But Demarion Allen, we have already seen Arlington play once. I believe they took on Ramona two weeks ago on Riverside right. TV. Right. That was a win by Ramona, 21-8. to eight. But Demarion Allen was a huge difference maker in that game. And he had a touchdown tonight, wiped out by a penalty. And he's made some big plays on defense. Going to call it a second and four scenario here for the Lions. A little bit of trickery going on here. Oh. Allen, once again, your ball carrier. And for the second consecutive play, he gets whacked pretty hard, actually. Anthony Gallegos, what a hit. I could hear that up here. Picks up nearly two on the play, maybe. Yeah, it looks like about a gainer of two. So it'll be like a third and a long one scenario here for the Lions. Yeah, Anthony Gallegos cut up this reel and send it to different folks, different friends. Let them know. <laughs> I bring the thunder <laughs> on Riverside TV. That was a huge hit. Third and short scenario for Arlington. Let's see if they can convert. Direct snap this time. Ball carrier is number eight, Isaac Gomez. He pushes the ball forward to the 40 of Patriot. Yeah, that's hard to stop. A lot of speed and momentum on that uh, third down carry. Surprised we haven't seen more of that out of Gomez. Yeah. So it's another one of the tools in the toolbox here for Coach Jeff Roney. Oh, he might be the design quarterback now. That's what it looks like. He's coming in with a play call, so it looks like there might have been a little bit of change up here in the backfield. Mitchell Wood down along the sidelines. I don't think there's any kind of injury, injury scenario. Yeah, yeah, it looked like he was okay. First down and 10. Direct snap once again. More daylight and another first down here. Picked up by Isaac Gomez. So two plays in a row by Gomez really springs it forward here for the Lions of Arlington. And now things are really beginning to look very favorable yeah. as they push it in well, Patriot territory. I mean, we're seeing there's a lot of playmakers on both sides. This isn't your typical 10-8 to 8 football game. I think the offense is needed about a half to find their mojo and confidence. And now these teams are rolling up and down the field. Hey, I said whoever scores the first touchdown wins the game. I don't think that anymore. Gomez actually gives the ball off to number 22, Matthew Maloney. Maloney ball carry. So it's interesting how Roney has really mixed things up with different yeah. personnel. I mean, for a team that doesn't pass the ball all but a couple of times a game, they sure are switching it up. They've got three or four different ball carriers. Receivers are touching it. Quarterbacks, running backs, fullbacks. Interesting play calling here, and it's worked. Looks like the clock is going to go to zero before we get another playoff, and that will end the third quarter of play. And now the Lions of Arlington beginning to threaten the Warriors here as we hit into our fourth and final quarter. Yeah, this is such a fun football game because it's two totally different teams. In the first half, these teams looked a little tight. They come out in the third quarter, and it, it was like, a whole different football game, like different players suited up in the second half. They look much more confident and relaxed. Both teams really made some very nice adjustments during halftime, and it's really showing up here mm. in terms of the entertainment value. Maybe it's not a big score of what we're, <laughs> what we're used to, but 10-8. to eight. Yeah. This is a very close ball game as we head into the fourth quarter play here. But mind you, 10-8, to eight, it includes uh, two Patriot red zone drives ended with turnovers, a pick six, 
by the Lions that was wiped out by a penalty. A Demarion Allen touchdown run that was wiped out by a penalty too. So this very easily could be in the 20s or 30s. First down and 10 is your scenario now with the ball spotted at the 15. And it looks like Gomez will continue on in the backfield here along with Maloney. Reed so Van Lerup's now a tight end. Gomez on the direct snap, spins around. Keeps the feet moving, finally brought down to the turf. You just wish if you were Arlington that you had a little more of a passing game because if this kid, Gomez, is a wide receiver running routes, I have a tough time thinking anyone on the Patriot roster could, could catch him. If he just ran a post or a, or a streak, I think this guy could run past just about everybody. He is that fast. But unfortunately, as a running back, there's only so much you could do before you get touched. Alex Garcia making the stop there for Patriot. And it will be Gomez continuing with your quarterback scenario here. And Maloney continuing on as your running back. Give us to Maloney, looking for some daylight, very patiently waiting his way, almost gets the ball stripped out of his hands. But it looks like it'll be a pickup of about four, maybe five on the gainer. Shout out to the great blocking from Arlington led by a senior Gabriel Holland. He blocked two different Patriot Warriors on the same play. That's, a, that's some good stuff. That's textbook. Great I'm work by both lines here. Yeah. Coaches, after every week, typically, this was the way they did it at my high school. After every game, they'll put on a whiteboard the amount of whiffs times that you didn't give your 100% effort for an entire play. Gabriel Holland, I don't think he's going to have a whiff after that play or anybody on the offensive line. I think they blocked pretty well, pretty effortless on that one. And the give is to Allen going off tackle to left. Looks like he'll get the first down. And that'll bring up a first and goal scenario here for the Lions. So it's very interesting the, the mix that Roney has done here yeah. offensively because now we see Mitchell Wood and Christian Bozeman back into the backfield here for Arlington. And I think that sort of change every other snap of quarterback and running back. It hurt them in the first half, but now they've got the legs under them. So it'll be a first and goal scenario. Ball's inside of the five, right at about the three-yard line. Patriot could really go a long way to winning the game if they can make a stop here. Because you've got to believe Arlington will not be kicking a field goal. High snap. Bozeman, your ball carrier. He plunges forward for the score. Wow. Going back and forth here, which is great. <laughs> sure is. Well, Lions are able to deliver in the red zone. And that right now is the difference in the game. Warriors had to settle for a field goal. And right now, that's the difference. 14-10. And to me, I think two-pointers almost doesn't even matter because these teams are scoring touchdowns. I don't think any of them are going to be kicking any more field goals. But, or at least Arlington looks like they have no designs of kicking field goals. Yep, looks like they will do the two-point conversion attempt. Gomez, once again, your ball carry, and he has it. Boy, he just had plenty of daylight there going off tackle to his left. How do you stop that? <laughs> Nicely done. He takes a jump step to the left and puts on the afterburners. Makes it a six-point ball game, so this makes it interesting here yeah. in the fourth quarter of play. Well, I guess, you know, I take back my comment because if the Warriors miss a PAT, then all of a sudden you're tied, so... There is some benefit to going for two, but I think if Arlington had a choice to go for one or felt comfortable, they would have done it. It's a nice, entertaining ball game we got here with a six-point lead yeah. by the Lions of Arlington. Glad to have you along with here, J.R. Ibarra and Nick Price. Rice? <laughs> I knew I was going to say Price. That's fine. I think we know who each other are by this point. We've worked with each other so many times. You know? Absolutely. It's, it's annoying. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Taylor Demacio or Demacio with a squib kick. Does it go long what enough? What are you doing? Get it? the ball. I thought it touched one of the Lions. Patriot recovered. Wow. Patriot needed to hop on that ball way quicker than they did. Wow. They, I, 
I think what had happened, I, I thought it, it might have touched one of the players for the Lions, so that's yeah. why the ball goes in possession of Patriot. But it looks like Raymond Villanueva had enough of a wherewithal to pick it up at the last second. But it looked like they didn't know what the rule is. You can touch before 10 yards. No, and, and they're giving the ball to Arlington. I don't know about switching the call like that. Wow. What a change of fortune here. But, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I know in, in college in the NFL you can touch before 10 yards. In high school, you, you could grab that if you're the return team. Well. I don't know why they waited until right at the 50, but nevertheless, Arlington really gets a huge break here. You know what? Gutsy call by Jeff Roney for doing yeah. that. I mean, huge guts. here you are in the fourth quarter play, leading by six trying the onside kick I guess it is something quite unexpected so yeah I called the Arlington Lions old school but uh, I take that back they're going for two they're attempting onside kicks Bozeman your ball carrier daylight to the 20 to the 10 touchdown Arlington 50 yard run by Christian Bozeman wow This has got to be very frustrating for the Warriors. It seems like the entire game just flipped on them in a matter of about, what, 15 seconds? They couldn't stop them with the goal line. They recover the onside kick, and the Lions punch it in with a 50-yard Bozeman score. And now we've got a chance for a 14-point ball game. Yeah, it looks like they will look at another two-point conversion attempt as Wood comes into the backfield. I told you, this Christian Bozeman kid, only a freshman. If he was a senior, I'd say he's a pretty darn good player. Good this guy's size, the limit for this good freshman. Good-sized kid. I don't have any specs on his height and weight. Wood, back to pass, has a man open and just <laughs> underthrows, actually out of the reach of his intended receiver. Looks like it was intended for Travis Hodgson. I don't know, maybe what, like 5'10", 200. That's my guess for Christian Bozeman. 5'10", 200. Actually, I, I might maybe, consider maybe him a little bit taller than that. I might actually put him at the six-foot six range. Really? Yeah. He's, he's a pretty big kid. And you got to consider he's, what, 14, 15 years old, so yeah. he's maybe not stopped growing yet. For sure. Now, for Arlington, they just hope that there's not a situation that we saw two weeks ago. I forget who the team was that we were calling the game for, but the kid transferred from Texas. Oh, correct. Remember? What was that school? That was Corona. That was Corona. That was so, Corona. Yeah, hopefully for Arlington's sake that this guy doesn't transfer to Texas, <laughs> all right, and he stays in Riverside. So, Demacio, let's see what he does this time. Another onside kick. Looks like a lot of guys oh, were looks offsides. Like offsides big time here for Arlington. But, yeah, you could see that they were moving beyond the 50. So that definitely is a rule. You can touch it before it goes 10 yards if you're the return team. So I don't understand what they were doing. But, you know, when you're in high school football, truncated COVID season, it's hard to tell these high school kids of all the rules, not just how to play offense and defense. But, hey, when a team – surprises you with an onside kick, here's how to react. So that's something maybe this return team has practiced 30 minutes the entire season. That's not something you typically go over, surprise onside kicks. Got a couple of players coming into the ball game with Kyle Askar and Demacio. Let's see what he does this time. Will he finally kick it away? Actually, on the turf one more time. Ball dribbles right to about the 45. Good job recovering there. Absolutely. Very smart not to try to scoop it up and make things happen on that football play. Sean Johnson making the grab there for Patriot. That's got to be nerve-wracking. Sean Johnson, you see the guys all collapsing around him. <laughs> it's like, if I don't recover this, my head's getting torn <laughs> off. Stops the clock at 948. Lions with the advantage of 22 to 10 here in the fourth and final quarter. And this is about money time. I think if Patriot doesn't score here, Gomez, uh, Bozeman, they're all running wild. They need something on the scoreboard right now. And we oh. got movement. Oh, plenty of tragic. Plenty of midseason tape to go over. And listen, as I mean, I'm telling you, I, I 
only played freshman and junior varsity football. I'm not bringing a whole lot of, of experience to the broadcast booth tonight. But from my limited experience, <laughs> those tapes and the suicides we'd run throughout the week, they were not fun after we committed several false starts. Ruben Punsalen, unfortunately, went just a little too quick. Direct snap is going to go to Brandon Lopez, who makes up a lot of territory there. And it'll be a pickup of about 15 on the run. All right. I mean, Patriot did show an ability to throw the ball. We'll see if they do it. Scratch that. A pickup of 10, and he bobbles the football this time and drops on it right at the line of scrimmage. So that could have been a tragic scenario here yeah. for Patriot. Yeah, Arlington's really impressed me. They overcome a slow start. And, and, you know, sometimes I just fall in love with the teams that don't commit the mistakes. I mean, this got to be frustrating. Warriors nearly commit another turnover. Lopez, once again, is your ball carrier. This time a little bit of daylight out to his right. Keeps the feet moving. Looks like he'll get the first down. Excellent run. Moves the chains. So now some life being breathed into the offensive squad here for Patriot. Maybe this isn't a do or die drive because of how quickly they're moving the ball. There's still plenty of time left in the ball game. Looks like Lujan will take the snap this time around. Nope, direct snap to Lopez once again. Going to stay with the bread and butter scenario and he'll pick up at least four on the carry. Yeah, textbook open field tackle. We just heard number seven, Nicholas Roman, make the stop. How about that? A freshman. I mean, that's for him. Wow. Wrap him up by the hips and drive him down. Good stuff. Clock rolling here at eight. Ten in the fourth. Lopez on the direct snap. Looks like he might be right at the first down marker. Yeah, he got it. Moves the chains one more time. So this is the perfect drive. Patriot is chewing a very little clock. High school football, you stop the clock at moving the chains. Maybe you don't even need to throw the ball if you can move, the, move it like this. They can keep pushing here from their line of scrimmage. This could really fall in their favor. So Lujan now back to pass. Has a receiver open but underthrows it. Ball was intended for number 22, Ruben Prusalen. Yeah, Ruben Prusalen. He's got to run to the football. I'm sure that's something the coach will talk about. I mean, you're only running about three, four routes a game, but you have to run with a sense of purpose. He takes a fade to the back line, and when that ball is underthrown, he's got to make a beeline to that ball. Do not let the defensive back have a chance to pick it off or have it fall incomplete. Lopez, your ball carrier. Pushes forward for about five on the carry. Yeah, it's very easy uh, sometimes to, to, I mean, and you know, you see it in all levels of, of football. When you're the offensive player attacking the ball, even if you create contact with a DB, that's typically a pass interference on the defender, even though you're the one initiating the contact. So these receivers, if you want to make catches, you've got to be more aggressive. Lopez, once again, your ball carrier. Looks like he might be shy by about a yard or two. We'll bring up a fourth and one. So you got to know that Patriot will be looking to try to make this fourth down conversion. Yeah, you know, this is a huge play. <laughs> it goes without saying. Fourth and a very short one scenario here for the Warriors. Lujan now your ball carrier, and he'll pick up the first down with somewhat of an ease. Six foot, 190 pounds. Gets the chains to move. Now the clock becomes a factor here, Nick. Yeah, the Riverside TV clock is a little bit ahead of themselves, about 10 seconds. 618, okay, all right, well, Either way, 6-14, 6, 6 it's still very important. Direct snap to Lopez. He gets met right at about the line of scrimmage, possibly picks up one on the carry. And that just goes to show this drive is huge. I didn't think so, but this drive has crawled to a bit of a halt. 
as Arlington looks like they're starting to get a beat on some of these runs. Yeah, clock inside of six minutes to go in this football game, so they got to make something happen kind of quick here. And this is very impressive for the defense because they still have four DBs on the field stopping the run like this. Lopez, once again, your ball carrier gets stacked up. Possibly a pickup of two to three. Still trying to move his way forward. Met by a wall of lions. Yeah, I mean, it, it isn't bad play calling. They are taking what the defense is giving them. When you see only six in the box with a tight end in for Patriot, that's six on six. I mean, you got to believe that one of those blockers can make a play. Running the ball isn't a bad idea, but Arlington is delivering up front. Clock is nearly down to five minutes to play in this ball game with Lopez once again, your ball carrier, and will pick up maybe two or three on the carry. By this point of the game, of course you're going to go for it. Arlington stops him, and this one's basically over. But Warriors do have three timeouts. Got a player slowly coming. Actually, it's Lopez slowly coming up off the turf. Yeah, very impressive performance up front by Anthony Gutierrez, that nose guard. And he's huge. I, we don't have a height and weight on him. He's at least 6'4". Snap to Lopez. Bit of daylight, picks up the first down. Moves the chains once again. Great blocking up front. Stops the clock at four and a half remaining in this ball game. So I would imagine they're going to try to punch this in as soon as possible, and then we will see a potential yeah. onside kick, I would imagine. Yeah. Lopez, once again, gets wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. We'll lose about four to five. That's that guy again, Gutierrez, blowing up the play number 55. He was the first one to make the hit on the ball carrier. And, I mean, he pushed the guy back. It, it was so impressive. He might as well, have, if he was fast, just a little faster, he could have taken the handoff. That was impressive. Clock rolling at 350 remaining in the game. Once again, we will call the number of Lopez. He gets wrapped up again Jeez. behind the line of scrimmage. So it looks like defensively. Arlington beginning to flex the muscles just when they need to do so. Yeah, impressive. Gutierrez and number 56, Sammy Abdul-Majid. I mean, they're just disruptive. And by this point, I think now it's a little too late on third down and goal, or maybe it isn't. I would go a hard count here. If you're going to run the ball, I would try and catch the defense off sides because they're jumping the snap count by this point. Once again, it's a direct snap to Lopez. Has a daylight and takes it in for the score. So just like that, you knew what was coming with Brandon Lopez, and he's able to punch it in with 3.09 remaining in this ball game. It took them a little longer than they wanted, five-minute long drive, but they go the distance. It was somewhat predictable play calling, but they deliver. Warriors convert the PAT, and this onside kick if they execute it, is huge. Are you ready for a good finish? I'm I ready for a good so. finish. I think so. This could this could wind up being a, a pretty interesting finish here. Kai Kenova with a really bad snap, and it's missed. Oh, wow. baby. <laughs> Golly. Well, Edney Platalara tried to block the kick. He ran right through the kick, right through the, uh, the snap and hold. So – I think that had a lot to do with a miss. When you see a guy right a foot away from you kicking the ball, yeah, I'd, I'd miss it too. Then so, again, I'd probably miss it if no one was around me. That's a whole different story. It's a 22 to 16 ball game still in favor of Arlington as the clock is stopped at 309, getting very entertaining yeah. here. So let's see sure is. what special teams do here for the uh, for the Warriors. I go on site kick if I trusted it, but I wouldn't blame if they just kick off because Arlington True. with three timeouts, True. they need about two first downs, maybe even three to ice the game. There's still plenty of time left. Kendall, because of the three timeouts. Kendall, who does the kicking duties here for Patriot, is actually pretty good with his leg. So I would totally agree with you, Nick. I think kicking it away might be the smart thing to do. Well, we'll see. We'll see. You got to know that Arlington is ready for it. Yep, yeah, it is a squib kick. And they got it. Beautifully executed. It went the necessary yardage. And the... Warriors come up with a first down and 10. 
That looked like they practiced that play a couple of times. They had a wedge. The kicker, I believe, recovered. But bit, then again, you know, of, maybe of, Arlington recovered. Let's Who see. Knows? Bit of discussion going on with the zebra stripes. And, yeah, it'll be a first down and 10 here for the Warriors. Oh, baby. Clock didn't even move. It's still... Stopped at 309. I hope you guys got your popcorn ready. This one's getting good. Great football game here tonight on Riverside TV. So now it's been a smart thing that they've not burned any time out. Yeah. And oh. there was movement. Lujan unfortunately started, got ahead of the gun there, and that'll back them up five. So this is the thing about Patriot. It seems when the pressure was off because they were down two scores, you didn't see any mistakes. No penalties, no miscues. Blocking was excellent, and the execution was really, really good. Got then all of a sudden there's a lot of pressure involved because you take the lead, maybe win the game with a touchdown, and you see something like that. To me, I think this timeout's a great opportunity to tell your guys to calm down. Boy, right. Brand, Brandon Lopez got very slowly up off of the turf, and he's kind of limping his way to the sidelines right now, so that could possibly be a factor here for the Warriors. Interesting. Yeah. Now, another interesting thing is I believe that a timeout was called before the false start. Looks like we're going to have first and 10 again. Yeah, that's what it looks like as well. That's a huge break. Well, I take that back, but either way, if I was the coach, Chris Fowler, Calm down, guys. Okay, take it one play at a time. Don't try and score a touchdown right here. So we got a new ball carrier in the background with James Escobar in the backfield. Escobar, a junior here for Patriot. Direct snap to Escobar. He scampers his way forward by a gain of about three. Oh, boy. <laughs> Clock rolling. I think we picked a pretty good game to call tonight, this is JR. This a great game. You know what? It actually is meeting my expectations as Escobar, once again, your ball carrier, picks up about two to three before he's oh, taken so down this, by the two screens. This meets your expectations? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, you know, coming in, I knew these teams were fairly evenly matched. But even when teams are evenly matched, it's rare that a game gets this close. Clock is rolling, though, at 224 remaining in the ball game. Escobar, actually it's Lopez back into the football game. Gets stacked up of a gain after about two yards. So we're hearing it up here in the booth. Andrew Lujan is almost like a gunner on these uh, offensive plays. He's very close to getting penalized on almost every snap. He's got to figure out a way to not jump the snap like this and wait for the ball to come back. Two minutes remaining. Boy, it's amazing how much Fowler wants to save those timeouts. As you said, once again, Lujan was kind of making the movement before the snap, but Lopez, your ball carrier, looks like he'll pick up the first. Yeah, so you're seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's just a quarter second early, and the officials are letting him go. He could easily be flagged for that, easily. Yeah. Clock running. Oh, they got to get something moving here. I would stop the clock if I were Fowler, but yep. that's just me talking. Back to passes, Lujan. Going to keep it, has some daylight. Picks up the first down and keeps the feet moving and brings it inside of the 20. Lions have an injured player. They may have to stop the clock here. Oh, that oh, looks like he's fine. <laughs> he's running in 10. way late. First down and 10 at the 19. Clock rolling with 123. Snap goes directly to Lopez. Out to his right, gets cut down after a gain of five on the carry. And we do have a player down on the turf. Yeah, same guy hurt on the previous play. He's not getting up this time. So 58 seconds. My goodness, what a good football game. Actually, we have 115 on the official board over here. So oh, okay. All the right. official time clock is at 115. But Even none, better news for the Warriors. Nonetheless, my gosh. Yeah, so, you know, it, maybe the officials just got tired of calling that because that seems like a pretty – Significant advantage for Lujan to jump the, the snap like that. And even though they called a pass on the previous play, 
I mean, Arlington couldn't stack six in the box. They had to drop another guy into coverage, and that linebacker was the difference on that huge run. And I mean huge. And and listen, I was like you. I thought a timeout would have been a good idea, but right. Arlington looked gassed. And I think this injury is going to help them kind of catch their breath. Yeah, this is this is kind of a big plus here for the Warriors. Yeah. Still trying to find a number on our injured player. I think uh, it's the potential Hawaiian or Samoan Lilo, uh, Tino Lilo Maeba. But I'm, but uh, don't don't uh don't quote you on that. Yeah, don't quote me. That's that's the word. Thankfully, up on his feet. Oh, 24. I think, right? No, actually, I think it, it might be 57, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're all off. <laughs> I tell you, our eyesight. I think uh, a trip the optometrist tomorrow is in store. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I am pretty sad. No, no Riverside TV tomorrow. Yeah, no Saturday game. That's a little different. I know we will have a Saturday game next Saturday. Uh, let's go ahead and tell the folks at home what the schedule is, yeah, shall let's, we? Yeah, let's do that. All right, you did a lot of the readings from before. I'll, I'll take this one from here, you got JRE it, Barr. You so got we've it. got three games in three days. How nice. about that? That's nice. So uh, you're going to be doing Saturday, Lakeside and Pauly. But Correct. first on Thursday, Notre Dame takes on JW North. That that's, will be our a first. Great matchup. Yep. High heavyweight league championship on the line on Thursday. Gazal and Jeff will take care of the, the broadcast for that one. Uh, Notre Dame and North, that might be for a league title. Then on Friday, La Sierra takes on Ramona. And the Rams, I'm sure, will be at the talk of the hour for Jeff Gorham. And then, and then it's over. Wow. And that's over. Okay, do we know who that is? I'm still not able to I see still don't know. Here, but, boy, what's kind of... Uh, Training staff, they're, they're, yep, they're, they're tr really they know we're broadcasting and we're not good at eyesight, so they feel it might be good to block the jersey number. Boy, he's still uh, having a tough time coming off of the field, so yeah. this, this gives a nice breather for both of these squads at this point. It sounds like there's a lot of Lions fans in the attendance tonight. This is a neutral side game at Ramona. But, yep, make sure to join us. Three games in three days next week on Riverside TV. It should be fun. Great weekend to cap off this abbreviated season. Yeah. Second and five is your scenario. 109 remaining in the ball game. Lopez, your ball carrier, keeps things pushing through the line of scrimmage. Will pick up maybe three on the carry. May as well wait and call a timeout after this snap. Inside of one minute to play. They can just keep pushing forward at the line of scrimmage. They could come up with something. And Lopez, your ball carrier, gets stacked up. Maybe a gain of a short one. Anthony North Gonzalez, leg. huge tackle. I'd burn a timeout here. You've got Absolutely. to get your right call. I on. think you've got to, you definitely got to take a timeout because the clock is now stopped at 32 seconds remaining. That's a lot of time off the clock. Fourth and, and, and two. It looked like we waited until one of the players called a timeout. Punsalan, uh, Ruben Punsalan, is that how you? Punsalan, yeah. Punsalan, okay. Uh, and and I don't know about that. If I was a coach, I would have burned the timeout a whole lot earlier. But uh, uh, Jr., I'm running out of nails to bite off. <laughs> this is a great football yeah, game. This comes is right a down really to this. good football and game. Look, it's a it's a fourth and short scenario. Clock stopped at 32 seconds, and uh, you couldn't ask for a better yeah. ball game here. And it came down to an onside kick that they were covering. That's amazing. So. And, and Lopez has been tough to stop. But if I'm Arlington, I mean, I'm daring you to throw the ball. If I give up a go-ahead passing touchdown, I'm fine with it. I'm stacking nine of the box in an attempt to stop the run. And I would say stop the outside run. Yes. Patriot has proven that they can move the ball when they get their speedsters out towards the edges. Yeah, no, I agree. I think if they can stop that outside run scenario, this will work in favor here of the Lions of Arlington. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. They, they've they only got about six inside the box. One eye safety and three defensive backs away from the run. I, I'm not sure about this play call. Here we go, fourth and two. Clock stopped at 37 seconds in the ball game. This can make or break this drive. Little bit of movement. Lopez through the 
middle portion of the he short. scrimmage will be shy by about a yard. I would have had more in the box. They didn't stack the line like they should have. Gets the first down. Clock is rolling with 28. Lopez pushes it forward, stacks up. Oh, he didn't get it. Going to be shy. <laughs> Going to be shy. They'd better call a timeout. Oh, what yeah. a play. Boy, look wow. at Chris Fowler came like running off the sidelines to call the timeout to stop the clock with 13.8 seconds remaining. Huge play up front on defense. Wow. Number 67, Alexander Vargas may have been the player to help save the football game. Warriors, of course, are going to have two plays. You can third and goal run it. Even if you're stopped in bounds, there's one more timeout left. But Vargas, he really showed something to me on that play. He stood the guy up and allowed his teammates to bring him down. Oh, oh man. Second and and I don't have a horse in any fight, so I'm not out here you know, rooting for one side or the other. This is just huge. Great, great football game. Very entertaining contest between these two squads, and we got to give kudos for both coaches and making things happen and entertaining tonight. So here's your scenario. It is a second and goal. Less than 14 seconds remaining. Let's see if the defense for the Lions can rise to the occasion. Lopez taking the snap once again. Got daylight and untouched into the end zone. Now they scored quick enough for Arlington still could take a shot to the end zone. Wow. And that's if they don't convert the PAT. This is really going to be interesting here. Yeah. So we're tied up at 22. I mean, gutsy from Arlington. I mean, they, they did the best they could, but Lopez was just way too much to handle. It was only a matter of time before he could find some some room on the outside, and that was untouched. Pressure's on Kai Kendall for the point after. He's been pretty good so far in the season, so they will have to rely on the kick. Kick is up on the way, looks good. And it is. So a one-point lead now by the Warriors with just 10 seconds remaining. And boy, what a ball game. Yeah, gutsy PAT because the blocking wasn't good either on that PAT attempt. But he puts it up with room to spare right between the uprights. Wow. Snap was kind of low again yeah. for Kendall, but he kept his wits about him, was patient enough to wait for his placeholder and put it right through the uprights. And I think the change of the football game was when Arlington had a 22-10 to 10 lead Went for a fourth down from inside their own 20. Remember, they were a foot away. The, the officials gave a pretty interesting ball right. spots. Right. And if they convert, I don't think the Warriors have a chance to even do what they did here in the fourth quarter. So it's amazing how football, there's a bunch of plays in a game, but it comes down to one, and I think that was the one. Warriors come back, score a touchdown, and then they recover it onside kick. And then here they are with another touchdown. Ten seconds lead. remaining. One point lead by the Warriors. Let's see what Kendall does here on this kick. I'm sure he's going to kick it deep and try to have Arlington eat up that time clock. Puts it on the turf. Nice low kick. And recovered right at about the 32-yard line. Boy, that timeout sure does look pretty good that they wasted earlier in the game, does it? Reed Van Leerup comes up with a very crucial yeah. recovery on that one because that could have been a disaster. Well, we saw this last year in the NFL. The Jets gave up a touchdown to the Raiders on the final play of the game. It could happen. It could happen. If I'm Patriot, I got five safeties standing at the 10-yard yeah. line. I yeah. don't know what they're doing bringing up the defense. You know where they're going, and they're out of timeouts. Boy, they're going to have to try to toss it out to the sidelines here to stop that clock. Mitchell Wood and Bozeman in the backfield here for the Lions. Ten seconds remain in the ball game. Wood from the gun, looking out to his right, has a man open, almost picked off. Nice swat down on the play for the Warriors. And I'm looking for a 54 on my sheet. Alex Garcia. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Stops the clock at 6.4 oh, remaining. Oh, man, let's see. 
I'd just run all streaks in the end zone. I'm throwing as far as I can if I'm Mitchell Wood and see what happens. Yeah, I think you definitely got to throw this one as far as you can with six seconds remaining. Back to pass. Toss is going to go out to his right. Going to be a hook and ladder play. Ball's on the turf. Going to get recovered. And that will end the ball game. Little bit of trickery. Wow. Just didn't work out for the Lions, and the Warriors are able to come back and win this by a score of 23 to 22. Game of the year on Absolutely. Riverside TV. Best Absolutely. game of the season. Oh, and man. And that's what football is all about. This game came down to two plays. Two plays. First half, final play of the half. Uh, I believe. Uh, Who's the quarterback there for? Uh, I'm going to get a name right. I don't want to get the name wrong. Andrew Lewin throws a jump ball to the end zone, picked off or turned for right. a touchdown by right. Gomez. Penalty wipes out the touchdown. That's seven points Arlington missed. Then in the fourth difference. quarter, with the Lions up on the ball game, they attempt a fourth down from their own 19, miss it. Warriors in three plays score a touchdown, changes the momentum of the game. And, of course, the play of the day certainly was that go-ahead touchdown run from Lopez. What a football game. This is about as entertaining as it gets here on Riverside TV, and we're glad that you spent your Friday night along with us to watch this really great contest between two very evenly matched squads and the Warriors coming out on top. Well, make sure to join us next week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, final week of the Riverside TV high school football season. We've got plenty of content on Riverside TV, so don't worry about that. But in terms of high school football, the season comes down to this. Thursday, Notre Dame plays at JW North High School. La Sierra visits Ramona right here, Ramona High School on Friday. And then, JR, you've got the final day of the regular season, Lakeside and Pauley on Saturday at King High School. Yeah, we'll cap it off next week, and so make sure you join us all three days for some yep. great high school football here on Riverside TV. Hey, thanks and kudos to our tech crew with Brad and Ryan up top having to uh, weather through some of the coolness out there because <laughs> oh, I know it's a, it's a bit up cooler there. upstairs Woo. than it is here in the booth, so we appreciate all the efforts put into this. Nick, thanks so much for your time here with us, and thank you, Riverside, for joining us on this Friday evening. Once again, it's the Warriors with a 23 to 22 victory over the Arlington Lions. This is J.R. Ibarra. We'll see you next week. Have a very pleasant weekend.